What's up guys, Justin Fuller here, and today I'm outside of a 2021 Honda Civic EX. Now this lands right above the Sport model, and then right below the EXL model, so it's kind of in the middle of several models. So we're gonna talk about that as far as what you gain going up and what you lose going down, but let's talk about what's more important is how does this compete against other vehicles out there on the market? And of course, hey, if I look at a 2020, am I losing or gaining anything? So let's hop on in. All right guys, so let's talk about what's underneath the hood of this vehicle. So as I pull you in, I'll let you know that this is a 1.5 liter turbo engine that you're gonna find here. Now, if you drop down to the Sport, you're looking at the two liter engine. So this is 174 horsepower versus 158 on the models below it. Now, related to that, let's also talk about gas mileage. So I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can see not only the gas mileage for this specific car, but how it competes against other vehicles out there in the market. Now, if you're looking at the 21 and the 20, this is gonna be the exact same vehicle as far as what's mechanically under the hood. So let's talk about that. So as we come in here, I'll point out that of course it is the 1.5 and you do have some space back there. So if you wanna run auxiliary lines for let's say an amp, a sub, lights, whatever it may be, you do have the space to do it. Now, as far as accessing your windshield wiper fluids and your radiator fluids, it's easy to get to. And then of course I have a dipstick to get to that easily too. As I come across, you can see I have my air box and then I've got a fuse box located right here. And then I've got easy access to my battery, term or excuse me, battery terminals. So it's not hard to access a lot of the things inside of this vehicle. So while we're at the front of this car, I wanna remind you that of course it does get 174 horsepower underneath the hood, right? And that translates out to a CVT transmission and then heads out to your wheels. Now I wanna throw a comparison of other vehicles out there in the market so you can understand, hey, how does this compete against some of those other vehicles as far as the power goes? So take a look at that and we'll move on to the next seat. So while we're at the front of this car, I do wanna remind you that the car does have Honda sensing. So you're gonna have a radar that's set up right down nice and low under here in the grill. And then while we're down here, I will point out, of course, that you have that black line running across the brow uh, I do have the LED daytime running light and then the standard halogen beam headlights. And then you'll notice I have fog lights in this vehicle standard additionally too. Now, as we come up top, I'll point out that there is a trapezoid cut out of the windshield up here. And that's where the camera's gonna live that's used for uh, some of your additional Honda sensing features too. Now, while we're talking about those, I'll let you know that it does have a collision mitigation braking system. Meaning that if it's looking like you're gonna rear in another car, first it'll give you an audible alert, then it'll actually give you a visual alert, and then it'll actually apply the brakes to help prevent the accident from happening. Now, related to going to the left and the right, you've got a couple different features working to you. So you've got lane departure, uh, essentially a warning system, right? So if I'm starting to go off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert and actually vibrate the wheel to say, hey, wake up, pay attention, which is road departure mitigation, right? And then I also have lane keep assist, which uses that camera that I was just mentioning up here. So with lane keep assist, what this does is it's gonna detect the lines out here on the road. And as I start to drift to the left or the right, it'll help keep me centered. Now, if I put my blinker on, it's assuming I mean to drift out of the lane, move over, fantastic. But if you don't use your blinkers, you're probably not gonna like this feature too much. So talking about additional safety, I do wanna remind you that of course you have six airbags in the car, so two front, two side running along the posts here, and then two full curtain airbags, right? So those are set up with rollover sensors, so even if I don't hit somebody, but I roll the car off the side of a road, it will deploy them to help protect everybody inside of the vehicle. Now, on top of that, you've got what's called ACE body structure, which is something that only Honda offers, meaning that the car is set up with different crinkle zones to help push everything out and around the car. The engine struts are designed to fall out, so the engine gets pushed down and under, so it doesn't come through the cabin and hurt anyone, uh, of course, and then keep everything flowing around the sides to protect all that precious cargo that you have inside of the vehicle. Now, moving around to the back of the car, uh, I will point out you have a nice big brake light set up here, so it's very visible and easy to see. And then of course you do have your reverse lights there additionally too. Now, this one does have a small spoiler that you'll see running right across the top here on this modern steel gray. Uh, and then of course you can see my uh, camera is gonna be right under here. Uh, and then of course, if I wanna pop the trunk, it is connected to the keys, which is a keyless entry system. All right guys, so here we are at the back end of this vehicle and I've got the trunk popped open. So as I pull you in, I'm gonna throw up on the screen a comparison of the trunk space that you have in this car versus other vehicles out there on the market. So that you can take a look at that and kind of understand, hey, is this competitive? Is this gonna have enough space for what I need? Now, as we pull in here, I'll point out that you do have carpeted floor mats, so that comes standard in the car, whereas other makes sometimes you charge you for those. Now, in the very back here, you do have a 60-40 split, meaning that you can throw down one piece versus the others, and the releases are gonna be right here, and as you move across, right here. Now, down below, I will point out that you can access your spare, so if you lift this up, you'll see that I have my spare, along my jack and all my accessories that I need in the vehicle, and then I have this tiny funnel, which we'll touch on here in just a sec. So as we wrap around the car, I wanna to talk to you about the gas door real quick. And the gas door is really cool because it's connected to your door locks, meaning that if I have the keys to the car and it's unlocked, all I've gotta do is walk up and push this and it pops open. I love that it has that feature so I don't have to go digging through the door here and try to figure out where the switch is. I can just walk up here and pop it open. 
Now in here, I'll point out that you don't see a cap on this. So it's capless, right? It has this valve. Now where this funnel that we were just talking about comes into play is that if I ran out of gas and I needed to be able to hold that open so I could pour gas in with whatever I was using, whether it be a water bottle, uh, you know, you fill in the blank with whatever you're using, I need something to hold it open. And that's the function of this. So if you didn't know, now you know in case you ever do run a gas, hopefully that doesn't happen. But a reminder, if you do, if you do have warranties set up on this car, one of those is the three year, 36,000 mile uh, coverage that you have as far as roadside assistance, and they will come out and give you a gallon of gas if that happens. Additionally, with that, you also have got three years, 36,000 miles as far as your, what everybody would call a bumper to bumper warranty. So your basic functioning skills of it'll replace anything that isn't wear and tear. And then you have a five year, 60,000 on your powertrain. All right, guys, so here I am in the second row of the vehicle. And I just want to kind of show you what it looks like as far as legroom. So what I did is I set the seat for a six footer, which would be myself sitting in front of me. And this is what it's left me as far as being in the back seat. So I do have some space that I can use in the car. Now, as you look at the materials, it is going to be a cloth interior. Now, if you drop down to that sport model, you're getting a cloth leather blend mix. Or if you go up to the EXL above this, you'll get a full leather setup. So just depending on what you want, you can always add leather to a car too. So that's an aftermarket addition. You can usually do at a lot of dealerships. Now let's talk about the material. This one has a black interior also is offered in a gray interior and it's almost like a neoprene finish i like the black because it covers up stains but if you have a dog with white hair this is probably not going to be your friend now over here of course i have a different material on the doors and then i do have some storage here now one thing i don't like is that you won't find air vents in the back of this car since it is a little bit smaller you're depending on the air up there to make it to the back of the vehicle uh, and you also won't find usbs back here you're gonna have to climb models to get that additionally too so just one of those things to keep in mind as a second row passenger now while we're here i will throw up on the screen a comparison of other vehicles and makes and models uh, as far as the leg room going on back here. So take a look at that on the screen and that way you can kind of understand how this lives in the market and we'll move up to the front row. All right guys, so here we are at the front row of the vehicle. So as I pull you in, I'll point out that of course you do actually have a powered seat on your driver's side in the EX model, which is a nice change of pace in previous generations, you wouldn't have found that. Uh, you, in fact, you wouldn't have found a powered seat at all, but now you'll find it starting to your EX and moving up above. Now over on your other side, it is gonna be a manual adjustment. So just keep that in mind. You'll have powered here, although not lower lumbar support. So be aware of that regardless regarding the seats. And of course you do have a cloth here, whereas if you climb up a model, you'll be getting that leather in the EXL model or the Touring. All right guys, so let's talk about the dash layout and some of the different buttons that you'll see as we come across here. So I'm gonna start you over here on the left side. So the first one I'll point out is the road departure mitigation system I mentioned earlier to where if you start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give you an audible alert and it'll actually vibrate the wheel. So that's on if you see the LED on it right here. Now the one above this is always on unless you turn off this is collision mitigation braking. And that's where I mentioned earlier that if it's looking like you're gonna rear in another car, first it'll give you an audible alert, then it'll give you a visual alert, and then it'll actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent you from rearing the car in front of you. Now next to that is vehicle stability assist working with your traction control. So in the event that you go into a skid, it'll help transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction in the vehicle. Now moving up to your steering wheel, first off I wanna point out that I pushed the seat all the way back and all the way down, and I have got quite a bit of legroom. So if you're a bigger dude, you're up there in the 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", you're probably gonna be okay in this car, surprisingly. Now, as we look over here, I wanna point out on the left side of the steering wheel first, that you got your volume controls, and then getting through the menu, which I'll show you with this button here in just a second. Uh, and then of course your Bluetooth control, so to answer a call, to hang up call, and then you use voice command, so call so-and-so, this sort of thing. Now, using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which you will find on this vehicle, you can press and hold this and ask Siri to do things or ask Google to do things for you. All right, so on this menu screen, as I press the button, it'll actually toggle through quite a few different screens here for me. Uh, which, if you didn't know, you can also add and subtract some of these different uh, views here if you want to remove some of them. But you can see how to do that in a tips and tricks video. Now, as far as what you see here, this will give you like your range, so how many miles you have on this tank of gas, and then of course, you know, your trip A's and trip B's, so information like that. Now, moving over to the next one is going to be related to your torque management system, so related to your turbo specifically. So you can gauge and kind of see how you're working through that. Now, additionally from there, you're going to see uh, what's your, your setup related to as far as your oil life, which once you get down to 15%, it'll give you an audible alert and throw a code. That way you can tell exactly what they're going to recommend when you go in to get, uh, you know, your servicing done. Now, moving along, I can get to my audio. So right now, if I press up and down on the menu, it'll show you anything I have available to myself right now. I don't have a, a phone connected up to be a Bluetooth and I don't have a USB plugged in, so you won't see those options, but I'll go over all the options here in just a second. Now, moving one more over, this would be I could access my phone as far as Bluetooth and then switching between miles per hour and kilometers an hour. So that would be using the menu screen on here. Now over on the right side is gonna be some of those additional Honda sensing features. So if I press the main button, you're gonna see ACC and LKS, come on. So you can see them flashing at me up there. 
right? And that stands for Adaptive Cruise Control Lane Keep Assist. So Lane Keep Assist is right here. If I press this button here, I see some dotted lines appear up here, right? So those dotted lines mean that the camera up here that I mentioned earlier is now actively trying to read the lines on the road. So once you're going over 45, it'll keep you centered to lane. If you drift to the left or right, it'll actually move the string and keep you centered. Really cool feature, right? Uh, and that way, if you get distracted and you start to spill your drink, your dog jumps on you, it'll keep you from coming into the other lane or if for God forbid you were texting, which we all know you shouldn't do. Now, the next one is gonna be adaptive cruise control. So once I get up to speed, I would press set, right? And then where it says ACC off, it would say, you know, your speed. From there, I can press this button right here to create space. So you'll see these boxes right as I press it, you're gonna see boxes appear. The more boxes, the more space it's gonna keep between me and the car in front of me. Meaning if I set it to 65 and the car in front of me slows down to 55, I'm gonna slow down additionally, keeping that spacing that I set using that button down there. And then when I get out from behind them and get moving, it'll take me back up to my designated speed. So that's adaptive cruise control. Now, if you wanna flip that to classic, all you gotta do is press and hold. It'll tell you cruise mode selected. And now I'm on a classic cruise to flip back, press and hold, and now I'm flipped back. Now, moving over here, I'll point out that you, of course, have your wind, uh, your your lighting controls over here. So I can set auto right there, and then controlling my fog lights down below will be right there. Now, moving to the other side, I have my windshield wipers, so I can pull down, and then they are intermittent, so I can affect exactly what speed I want on them. Now, this car is a push-button start and a remote start vehicle, uh, so I'll just point out that right there. On the key, you have the access to be able to start the car. Uh, all you have to do is press the lock button, and then press and hold the remote start button, which you see right here, and that'll fire up the car. Now, if I press that same sequence again, it'll run it for an additional 10 minutes, so you could get 20 minutes total out of here. If I I want to turn it off i can press the unlock and, and then we'll start and it'll turn it off so just a reminder if you're new to this feature you always have to have the doors locked so you can't start the car and it be unlocked uh so somebody couldn't take off with your car so just this feature they have set up now this will pop the trunk open and of course i can set off the alarm if i need to and then just a reminder there is a switch on the back here you do actually physically have a key in this vehicle which we'll see if i can do this with one hand which i don't know if i can yeah so you can see that there is a physical key so if the car died i could still get in the doors with the actual door lock out there uh and you can actually get into the trunk with this additionally too so if you've never seen that i have a tips and tricks video that you can check out which i'll throw right up there on the screen so that you can learn a little bit about civics now i just want to talk to you about the touch screen that lands in this vehicle you'll find this in the model below at the sport and the model above it uh, so you do have this in quite a few of the models with the exception of the base model vehicle which would be the smaller screen now as far as accessing the, once you press the home button you'll see this screen to get to your audio i can select that and then from here i can press the source button this will give me all my audio options so fm am 90 days free of satellite radio i can plug a usb in which you actually got one right here they run the cable for you it actually runs back behind here so it's kind of cool that they did that that way you can keep your, your cables flush and put away although a phone doesn't fit back there really well which i don't care for now related to that you do have access anything with an eye you can pretty much plug it in it'll work uh, bluetooth i can stream my audio off my phone off my device whatever it may be wirelessly and then pandora compatibility if you're a spotify user no big deal you can always go via bluetooth or when we get to apple carplay and android auto i'll show you a couple different options now, moving away from that, uh, your info button right here is just going to show some brief stuff here. So if I want to see like my tripometer information, uh, I could do that. Or if I just want like a clock and wallpaper, I could do that right there, which you can throw custom images up back here and do some different things in that video I mentioned earlier related to the tips and tricks. And at the very end of this video, I'll throw up a, a link there too to where you can get to it again. Uh, now, moving back away from that, Honda Link is set up. When you connect up your phone, it's going to prompt you in the event that you get an accident, would you like to set up Honda Link to be able to call 911 for you? I highly recommend it. It's 100% free. In the event that you get an accident, they can report the year make model the color of the car in the last gps location um, in case you know you're stranded or you crash somewhere really weird and the airbags deploy and you don't answer when they call you now as far as accessing your phone once you connect it up uh, you'll be able to access all that if you haven't connected a phone up to the car yet it'll prompt you would you like to add one all you got to do is eat yes from there make sure your bluetooth is turned on and then search for each other uh, and you'll be able to connect up to the car now, as far as that can is second, third, or fourth phone here, if you go into settings, this is where you would be able to do that. Uh, under Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, I would be able to access that. So the Bluetooth device list, because I want to add a device to that list, and then I could hit add device right there, right? So I could add up to, I believe, six different, uh, you know, connections to the car via different uh, phones or whatever it may be. Now, related to settings, I do want to point out a couple quick features that people typically, you know, have questions about. And they're under vehicle. So this is going to be related to your door setup, right? So if you go to door and window right here, you can actually access the door and window lock setups, right? So auto door locks, right? So when I hit 10 miles an hour, it'll automatically lock the doors of the car. You can change that if you want to or turn it completely off. And then the one right below that is related to getting out of the car. 
So when I open my driver's side door right now, this is the default settings, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. So if you typically travel alone, maybe you wanna leave that off, or if you have other people and you're always taking long to get all your stuff together, maybe you don't wanna change it to one of these other options. So just know that the, both of those options are right there. Now lastly, this is probably my favorite option, walkway auto lock. So this is always turned off at the default. If you turn it on, what this means is that when I get out of the car, if I have my key with me and I get 10 feet from the car, it'll automatically lock the doors for me. So if you're the kind of person like me who always has a bag, maybe with camera gear or something in it, and I get halfway to the grocery store and go, oh my God, I don't know if I locked it. I'm gonna have a panic attack until I go back and check. Turn this feature on, it'll save you some, <laughs> you'll, you won't lose hair, you won't gain wrinkles, and you'll just be a little bit happier about life. So those are the settings that I like specifically on the vehicle. Now, smartphone connection would be related to uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, so let's hop in and take a look at that. All right, so to connect to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're gonna wanna plug into the USB for this car. And I plugged it into my phone, right? So immediately it prompts up and says, hey, would you like to enable? So I'm gonna do it just this once for this scenario, right? From there, it's gonna prompt me with a couple things related. If you're an Android-based user, you are gonna need to download the Android Auto app, which I've already done. If you're an Apple user, don't even worry about it. You'll be good to go. So once you've done that prompt, you'll see this light up and say either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Now you can then access it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and collect on that. And the other thing I'll remind you is it does actually connect up via Bluetooth too. So it kind of knocks out two birds with one stone. If you've ever uh, if you've never done this in your car right so honda link what i mentioned earlier if i get in a crash airbags deploy it can call 911 for me if i don't answer so i'm going to turn that feature on since it's free and then it pulls up my apple car plan android auto so i'm gonna hit yes so if i get turn by turn directions it'll throw them up for me right so i use google maps so this populates first but you have access to apple maps or Waze or even tom tom if you want to use their gps uh which i'll actually throw something up on the screen so you can see 15 of the most popular apps used uh with apple car plan android auto so take a look at that real quick uh that way you can kind of understand some of the apps because i use some of the basics but i want I want you to know there's other opportunities out there. Now that you've taken a look at that, right? So I use Spotify regularly, so I have this pushed up here and you can rearrange what's up here, which I actually show you how to do that in that uh, tips and tricks video. And you can see that you can change the background back there too. So some cool features that you can do with this, but I want you to understand that you have access to a lot of different things here. So whether you want to use Waze, you want to use Google Maps, uh, you need to access the news, you want reminders. If you're a podcast listener, you can throw stuff up there. Heck, I've even got Teams as far as, you know, accessing, uh, you know, my, uh, my calls, you know, related to Zoom, my Teams meetings is even here and my messenger. So a lot of different things that you can access on here. So it's a very powerful tool being able to plug your phone in and access all this information in different platforms right here on the screen without having to pick up your phone and touch it. Now, the last thing I'll show you before we move away from the screen is the backup camera. So if I throw it in reverse, obviously it throws the camera on for me and it does have dynamic guidelines, meaning that it cuts as I cut the wheel with me, which is kind of nice to know. And then I do have three different views on this, uh, right? So I have a classic, you know, uh, a spread out one. Uh, I've got just a regular backup camera and then one aimed straight down. So if I'm backing up to another car, a garage, a bush, a pole, and I'm in a parking garage, I can really tell exactly where I'm at related to backing up. And you see this dotted launch is six inches from your car and two and a half to three feet. So if you're parallel parking, you want to use that line. Uh, and you'll see that on all three of these different views that you can view here, right? So just know that you have that available to you. So these three buttons are probably the most commonly asked about ones, and they're right here in plain view, but just not a lot of people know about them, right? So the first is the parking brake. That's fairly easy to understand. If I put my finger up and lift on it, electronically it sets it, and that lets you know that it's set. And then if I press down with my foot on the brake, it releases it, right? And then econ button over here. If I press this button, you're gonna see a green leaf appear up here, right? So what it's doing is improving the gas mileage of the car by affecting the power that comes off the accelerator and the AC unit. So it's affecting some of the electrical systems in the car to give you better gas mileage. And you can turn this on and off as you go whenever you want while the car's in drive. Doesn't matter, you can use it anytime. Now over here is gonna be the brake hold button. Now the brake hold button is really cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna back up a little bit because I'm gonna show you how this works, right? So if I have the brake hold button set, right? So let's throw the car and drive and press the brake hold button. Now it's immediately gonna alert me here and it's gonna show if it's actually holding down there. So you'll see two green boxes, right? Meaning that while the car's in drive, I can release my foot from the brake, right? So I have nothing touching down there and the car isn't moving. Then when I touch the gas, it's gonna let go of that hold. We start moving, I come to another stop. It'll say that it's holding again and now it's holding again for me. So you can kind of understand this is really good for like stop and go traffic or if I'm in a drive through line, but a reminder, you do have to have your seatbelt on it. You take this off, it disengages this feature, immediately throwing on the parking brake to let you know, hey, looks like you took your seatbelt off. It threw the parking brake on to make sure you wouldn't roll into the car in front of you. So for here, I'm gonna shift back the park so that I can release that, right? So that is what brake hold is and how it works. So if you're comparing this to a 20 or 2021, there's really not a lot of difference here. So you could absolutely probably find a 2020 and if you can get low enough mileage or even find a brand new one, you might be able to save yourself some money. So keep that in mind. Now, as far as other cars out there, let's revisit some of the things we talked about. So first I'm gonna throw up is the miles per gallon comparison. So you can see that up on the screen of how this car competes against some of those other cars out there in the market. 
Now, after that, I want to talk about horsepower. So you got 170 horse, or excuse me, 174 horsepower underneath the hood of this vehicle, running off that 1.5 liter turbo engine. So I'm gonna throw that comparison up there too, so you can see how it competes against other vehicles in the market. Now, after that, let's talk about that second low, you know, the leg room back here in the second row. So I'm gonna throw you up the comparison there so you can see that too. So you can kind of understand, hey, how does this compete against some of the other cars out there? Is my, you know, or my family, my friends, whoever's in the back gonna be comfortable. And then lastly, we'll talk about the front seat, right? If I can find a comparison, I'll throw it up there just so you can see, hey, generally, what kind of, you know, leg room do I have up in the front row? And then lastly, which I forgot, we gotta go all the way back to the very back in the trunk and look at a comparison there to understand, hey, how does it stack up? Do I have lots of room in my trunk? Does it give up a lot of room compared to other vehicles out there? I don't know, I've seen them out there on the road, but I don't really know. Other than that, I would say the, C the Civic EX is actually a fantastic vehicle. You know, you can get a lot of these same features in the model below the Sport, which speaking of the Sport, I'll show you that, hey, if I move from the EX down to the Sport, what am I giving up? So I'll throw the list of the items you're giving up. I'll also show you how much money you're gonna save by moving down to that Sport, right? Because I think that the Sport is actually a pretty good opportunity if you don't care necessarily about a moonroof and a couple other things, which you can see on the screen. Now, let's talk about the other way around. If I'm looking at this EX and I wanna move up to the EXL, what am I gaining and how much is it gonna cost me? So I'm gonna throw both of those up on the screen. So you'll be able to see, hey, what's the price increase on the vehicle? And then additionally, what extra items am I getting out of the car? So I can decide, hey, is it worth it to me to be able to have these items, but pay that extra money? So you can take a look at kind of going down and going up in the models. And then of course, the comparisons that I mentioned earlier. Other than that, I wanna ask you to do me a few favors. One, leave a comment. It makes me feel good. I like to know that somebody's out there watching and that they appreciate what I'm doing. Or maybe they don't appreciate it. You can tell me that too. It's okay. I can take it. And then second, hit the like button. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Do it for me. And if not for me, do it for you. Make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. And then lastly, share the video. You got some friends in a civic group? Maybe they wanna see it. Maybe they know something that I don't know or maybe they wish I would've touched on something and they need help with, right? Share it out there, put it out there in the world and let's see what happens. Maybe we can make even better videos together. Other than that, I hope you liked the video. I hope you'll share it. I hope you'll leave a comment and I don't got a fourth one, but if I come up with something good, I guess I'll put it up there too. Other than that, let it go.